Alright, so welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Card Game video, and today we're going to go ahead and feature the last of all three, or the third of all three, starter deck profiles that are all under $60 uh, for set 10. If you haven't already checked out the other two, it's going to be the blue green Vegito that I put out and of course the mono black Vegex. Um, both of them are going to be in the description with the playlist if you ever want to go ahead and share this out. Um, but this one is the starter deck Frieza uh, that features a bit of hand destruction of course which is the whole thing for the deck and then of course um, uh, a bunch of tech options that I put together and a little bit of a walkthrough and an explanation of all the cards. And again this is really directed to um, new people, of course, or anybody who wants to get into the game uh, but doesn't want to spend too much money or want to get into the archetype but doesn't want to spend too much money. Hopefully these have been pretty good, or at least uh, pretty good decks and as well as ex explanations and things like that. And definitely go ahead and subscribe if you're new. If you really want to support the channel, definitely go ahead and try to do a membership in the description. Uh, I'm trying to organize more tournaments for next month. I've been doing free ones on Untap with free prizing all coming out of my pocket and uh, to get better pricing and as well as just to support me if you want to go ahead and do a membership definitely go ahead and do that because it starts at one dollar so let's get into it so if we look at the deck itself we're going to start again with the leader in which uh, again this is the starter deck frieza if you haven't seen him already you can't include any saiyans uh, in your deck which is Pretty racist, but makes sense for Frieza. He hates hate Saiyan, so there you go. And his auto says, uh, when you attack, basically, you choose one of your Frieza army um, uh, cards in your battle card, or battle area, you place in your uh, owner's drop area, and then the opponent chooses one card uh, from their hand, discards it, and then you can take up to one life. So basically, they have to neg one from their hand after you neg one on your battlefield, but then you go ahead and plus from your life and, and help yourself um, self awaken basically and yes it has to be a Frieza army but pretty much I would say over 50% of the deck is Frieza army uh, so you're not going to have that much of an issue and I'm going over that as far as the curve goes as well but at four or less life you untap one and draw one and then of course the other side you swing and draw but this time is actually going to be an activate main which is so much better than attacking because the front side it requires you to attack a leader card but the back side you can go ahead and do it anytime as long as you have the requirements which this one is uh, another freezing army in your battle area placing a drop and then you choose something from their hand and placing a drop and then the um the other effect is that you have your uh, green unison card gain critical which is pretty good i think overall this has potential to be one of the best leaders uh coming out this set if not it is probably like top three like i would say vegex and frieza are uh definitely up there and just overall, it's pretty good. I think if we look at the Frieza core, the one drop Zarbon basically looks up the top five. Uh, you get to you see a, or get a uh, green unison with a specified cost of two, which you do play that to the right. And then, uh, or a green Frieza army with a uh, specified cost of four or less and add it to your hand and shuffle your deck, which basically searches maybe 60 to 70 percent of the deck which is awesome and then the other part is that the activate battle if you loot a card is green freeze a card which it is you have every green free uh unison card in play you choose this card or you send this card from your drop card to your warp and your loot a card gains 10k so it's really cool because a lot of the stuff as you can tell or haven't told or been able to tell already wants to be in the drop and this is going to be one of those cards that you use the leader effect on the front or back side and then you can go ahead and use activate battle and have a pretty much a one cost 10k for your leader or unison card which is pretty clutch because now you can go ahead and go for game for either one and now we have the one drop uh dodoria in which your leader card is a freezer card if it gets placed in the drop area by your hand by a skill it doesn't have to be your skill uh it can be the opponent's as well you can play this card from your hand or from the drop area basically so you pitch it to your drop if it gets pitched then you go ahead and play on the drop uh into the battle, battle area which is really good because now you have a freezes army now you can use the looter effect. Now you can do other shenanigans with it. Uh, and activate main. If you loot a card as a freeze of card and you have a green use in, in play, you add this card from your drop area to your hand. And then basically what happens is that you have this green use in, you play it for two, and uh, the permit says if you lose a marker from the opponent's attack, you may choose a one life to the drop area. You basically crit one, which I don't really recommend. I, um, I would say just use the looter effect. If they swing at this, I would say just let it die, especially if you have it in your uh, have another one in your hand. But in special circumstances, 
I would definitely go ahead and use that permanent if you really need that on the board because sometimes you really do need that on the board in order to continue your combos and other things, you know, correlating uh, to the other cards, just like we were saying here. And of course, uh, you plus one marker, you choose one card from your hand and discard it and draw one card. Um, and another part is you minus one marker, you KO a four or less or choose one of their unisons and uh, minus a marker from there, which is both very, very useful, honestly. Uh, in the green, yellow Dende build, I use this card and it's actually pretty cool because um, just overall it's good, it's just good, good for board control. And then of course the other part of it is making sure that um, you get an extra unison marker off in their end. So if they have like five markers and you have no idea how to get them off, this really helps in the long run. Now, if you look at all of the Frieza's army stuff, uh, in this deck in particular, we have the Chi Lai, which is probably one of the most expensive cards in this deck. I think this is actually at three, so sorry for the typo. Um, but uh, we do play her in which you draw one card after you play it and then activate main, which doesn't have a once per turn, by the way. You can pay a green and colorless, which all these cards in this deck is basically green. Uh, you choose a green Frieza's Army tier or less from your deck and you play it and then you shuffle. So you can play another Dodoria, but you probably wouldn't want to do that. You can play the Zarbon and look at the top five, probably don't want to do that. You can do this, but uh, early game is usually the one that you want to do. But the best target is probably going to be Speedy Partner and Limo, in which as soon as you play it, they have the Neg one. Um, you swing for 15k, uh, as long as the Chila is on board that is. You swing 15k and use the Looter Effect afterwards, and then you ha they have to Neg another one. So overall pretty good. If you get into the um, the space in which you swing with Leader, well one, you have this on board. You go ahead and draw one, you have three energy let's say. You untap two, play this guy, they um, pitch one, you swing with it, and then after that you swing with Leader. And then they have to pitch another one uh, after you take a life, if needed, awaken, untap one, draw one, and then on the activate main, you go ahead and pitch the Chi Lai, and now they have to basically pitch, what, three cards from there, and you have uh, two swings there, so not too bad, I, I would say. And then, of course, the Zarbon over here is a super combo of choice in which um, uh, we do play 202 with the Android 7 or Android 18 and then the Zarbon, which you draw four or less from there. It's not too special. The Zarbon over here does search out this guy, so if you want to max them out, that'd be perfectly fine, you know. And then we also have the Frieza army or the Frieza Frieza line basically, in which this guy is a two drop. You can play with Chi Lai, which is another target I would recommend. His auto says is that the opponent removes this with a skill. You draw two cards, which was nice. And then activate main is that you choose one Frieza army or Frieza card. It has to be Frieza, not Frieza's name Zeno or Frieza BR, but Frieza, this one, and as well as this one, uh, and play it on top of this, this card. Uh, in active mode. I think the cool thing about this card is that it's only one energy So if you ended up playing paying two for it and you swing for 15k and They just don't attack it or you defend it or whatever and then you pay one for the next turn and then you have a critical uh, After swinging with 15k again or a dual attack that KOs something or removes a marker I mean this this card is pretty damn good. I would probably play this even at three if you have the room This is already a 50 something card deck. So, you know um, but what usually happens is that you play this card um, uh, or you you pop something. Uh, but basically, these, these guys are going to be the targets in order to play the one-star ball. But this guy uh, has these targets for this, and then uh, the one-star ball has the target for this guy right here. So what happens is that, again, you use the unison of card uh, to pitch something or to minus one marker. You pop something for or less. Uh, or you pop something with this guy, you use a Frieza army or a Frieza attack, surprise attack um, card afterwards and play it for free for 15k because you pop something, now it's it's played for free. Um, and then now the one star ball can either act in your hand as a 5k pombo or you choose one Frieza army uh, or Frieza card, just simply Frieza, place it underneath the card and then you place the Xeno card on top of it. And now, not only have a 15k double striker, um, but you can go ahead and use this activate main in which says you place it in a drop and now they have to pitch one So it's pretty good overall. I think this line of cards uh, gives you a, a good versatility I think that's the that's the thing about this deck. It has hand control it has versatility and overall is pretty just pretty much just fun Overall, I, I think that the deck is just fun to use um, So so far, I think overall what I've, what I've gone through is just basically all the basic um, interactions that you can do with the deck so if you have any questions on this, definitely uh, definitely comment below because I I know I kind of went back and forth with that one. And now 
when we look at the tech options, we do have Hidden Power of the Saiyans. We only play one. Um, this is pretty much the only counterplay. You can probably play other counterplays if you'd like. Um, I mean, Preemptive Strike is probably the alternative to this one. The only reason why I play one, I used to play two, is because it just sort of, it was very situational, right? Um, and basically what this says is the leader card is green. Your opponent play, may place the battle card they're playing in an owner's drop area if they're playing it. Um, if they didn't, they have to choose two cards and place it in the drop area. So it's basically um, a, a choice if they want to or not. The only thing that doesn't affect is things would deflect, uh, I do believe, because it's just any battle card basically. It doesn't have a cost restriction. So there you go. Then we have uh, Shocking Death Ball, which is just the negative choice. You can use it for sparking if you have five and drop. Um, and just nice to have a two, ca two or less KO. So that way you can use your your free or your surprise attack um, uh, Frieza to proc it off. And now probably the most expensive card, which I'm sorry if this is not under sixty dollars because of this card. So you can probably uh, you can take it out if you want. But it is a nice finisher uh, if you don't see everything else, or if you just don't outvalue or out um, attrition the opponent basically. And this guy, this this woman, um, Rebrian, uh Avatar of Affection. Basically, you pay for five. Um, and it has triple strike 30k and then when this is in rest mode uh, your opponent can only attack this card basically you can't attack the leader and then when you play this card you choose all the opponent's battle cards and you're repairing and KO them so it board wipes it acts as a deadly defender and they can't attack your leader it protects the leader and then when it moves when it's removed from the battle area you choose up to one battle card and cost of four drop uh, four <laughs> in your drop area and play with the skills negated which is nice because now you can go ahead and use the Frieza army or the Frieza card over here, uh, and then make them neck one next turn, or swing with double strike and try to go for game or threat two, or use a dual attack Frieza for 20k for two attacks. So overall, pretty good. Uh, the surprise attack Frieza, it's not too bad, but now it gives you targets for the negative energy ball. So there you go. Chamba is always there to take game when they're at two. Artificial impact is to get around barrier. Basically, of course, you pay three. They they uh, you actually make them pitch one. You choose, and then you you uh, place one of their Bottle cards, ignoring Barry into the drop. So there you go. And of course, it is a 5k combo. I think we only play one of these, so don't even worry, don't even worry about that clogging up the deck. They do play the Dark Temptation Toa. Um, you do want stuff in your drop area, right? So you have to be very careful careful of what you uh, overwhelm after. And she gives a 5k combo, uh, which helps with the um, the uh, Zarbon the uh, the basically the uh, warp effect and activate battle give a 10k uh, so overall a pretty cool card they neg one 5k to your leader uh, and it's a free free 15k attacker which Champa or anything else will help with and then of course we have scientist foo so if you're not using Toa throughout the game you're going to see scientist foo is only a one of uh, it's an older card but it is pretty good in this deck because you're you're already putting that aggression on um, and I've, I've done this on like turn three probably even in turn two I think because your your deck sort of gets things into the drop area pretty quickly with the Xeno Evolve, uh, with the dark uh, the um, the the one star ball, or the, zero, the negative balls, whatever it's called, one star ball. There you go, one star one one star one star negative balls. There you go. <laughs> so doing all that and putting putting in the drop, you have pretty much three cards because you're evolving on top, etc. Right. Um, and then because of that, you you build up a drop up to seven. You pay one. You overwhelm, draw two. Uh, now you have a 20k, uh, 25k double striker. So the alternative to this is probably the um, the mirror, uh, the drop box mirror. So I would say, you know, if you want to expend your budget, there there you go. Android 18, the bionic, bionic Blix is nice early on. Not only that you're uh, doing hand destruction, making them bottom deck a card, um, it's just nice, right? It's just really nice to have. Some people play it at four. I like it at two because the other two is searchable. This one is not. So I would say it's very um, situational. So if they're swinging with like a, uh, a one cost double striker critical to your leader, um, this will get around it pretty easy in, into the uh, early in the game. Now, lastly is the cards to update, upgrade the deck. So of course, <laughs> green has a lot of support, right? Green has a lot of support now for hand control and as well as just controlling the board. If you haven't checked out my, my Clash of Fates uh, set 10 deck, it plays pretty much all these cards, most of them anyway, and for good reason because they're all really good cards. The Rebrian, you pitch one with your, with your unison or with any, whatever, or you combo out with it, and then you pay two and then they pitch two. So 
it's just crazy. The cell earth earth destroying Kamehameha because it is a mono green deck. You might as well play it. You get a 15k combo and then you pitch. They make you you make them pitch one. You choose them, uh, which is just insane for one energy <laughs> and dormant potential. There's not much I can really say about it. You, you stop turns. You pitch a card. It just helps with the deck a lot. SS Bardock is probably the the unit of choice if you're not playing the Frieza. Um, it helps with hand destruction in the combo phase, and you play a lot of one drops already, so you might as well just go ahead and do this. Plus, you get triple attack 20k after three markers, and giving that um, critical is pretty pretty good, like pretty damn good, I would say. Of course, the Frieza Charismatic Villain is really really good, especially with the five drop Zamasu. Um, it's just really good. Like you you pay two for either one of these unisons, and now this is live. Anything that they play, now you have. Uh, something to the KO it up to seven or less. That's just a crazy range. Defending power, defending father of Paragus is nice if you want to draw instead of doing everything else that we talked about. Master Roshi kind of plays into everything else because you're just going to get into the drop by comboing or using using the unison and uh, getting back things like the IAR cell, the Dorm Potential, etc. is really good. Zarbon is probably the best card that you can pick up first if you want to add into the uh, Frieza Army card. Not, not only has he's a free blocker. But you make them pitch one if they have six more cards uh, in their hand or five more cards basically in their hand. So I, I just it's just crazy. Honestly, th this card is just crazy. It is it's it's awesome. It's a tournament tournament pack promo. So I don't know if we're gonna see it anytime soon in person, but it is just an awesome awesome card. And a hasty dispatch dispo. I'm kind of in between this card because again, you play a lot of one drops. If you have a unison on drop and, and on board, especially Bardock, you play the dispo. You um, Pitch, you make them basically you you, you play the Bardock, you, you play the Dodoria or the Zarbon, and then you um, uh, pitch it, and then they have to pitch a card, right? The activate main there. So it was pretty nice. And of course, Freeze Army Pond, shout out to Eggman, in which basically all these things that you're playing for drop from the Zarbon to everything else, like the uh, Dodoria, you draw a card every single, every single time that they play. So uh, there you go. And of course, the last ones is a secret. Black, most, Black Smoke Dragon is probably one of the better ones because it's so versatile and it helps the deck. Uh, Fusamasu, if you have a total of five or less, or a total of five that adds up to five green cards, which is going to be the Frieza or Zarbon or uh, any of the one drops that add up to five, now you have an indestructible uh, <laughs> 20k attacker that they have to pitch one. So there you go. And the Kunkunsa uh, is so good, is that a two drop negate chaos pretty pretty much anything that has no barrier it doesn't even have to be the, the the thing that's attacking you just you just chaos something that doesn't have barrier um so overall a lot of choices uh to upgrade the deck but as it is right now it is a nice casual um you know like not too bad of a deck to play and i've played it a good amount of times to figure that out and it does have bad matchups in which you know uh red anything that plays um, things like like the Vegex, like top tier decks are definitely going to beat this deck, but it will definitely put up a fight and you'll be able to do a lot of things and you'll find out where you want to upgrade as you play the deck. So I would definitely give it a shot. Okay, the last thing I want to do is mulligan just like I did with the Vegex and we'll be out of this video. <laughs> okay, here we are on Untap, just like I did with the Vegex deck. Uh, it may vary, you know, because Untap is just Untap, so... There you go. Um, but let's go ahead and see what we get from our starting hand, which doesn't look too bad already. So this is a one of, even though I, you know, probably won't see it. Um, might as well just put it in there. I might keep the Android 18, depending if they're going aggro. I know they're going to be uh, swinging with like one drop attackers and things like that. You might as well just keep that in hand. And then if we're going second, let's say we're just going second. Uh, this is not too bad of a hand going second either. Now, uh, let's do this and then put life. Oops, let's go ahead and do seven more. Okay, so uh, let's say they play to one drop or whatever and then pass, right? We're gonna go ahead and draw. Um, depending on their deck, you know, you could charge the artificial impact. It's really play one. You might as well just keep in your hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge this. And then you have to make the decision of, okay, so do I want to go a little more aggressive with the Dodoria or do I want to just go ahead and draw and then use a looter effect and take a life, right? So it's really depending on what you are going to be going up against. So things like uh, Sinchenron or things like that are more control or like Gogeta BR or something like that. Anything that just wants to set up, you want to go ahead and go with the Dodoria, right? That way you can take two life 
uh, and make them pitch one, you're just giving them basically three cards after leader effect and as well, or the leader attack and as well as the Dory attack. If you don't, then you can go ahead and use the Eli and then just draw one, swing, and then uh, pass if you don't feel like pitching this guy or p pitching her and doing that. So what we're gonna do here is probably just assume that they're not, they're just gonna be sitting there. Let's say they're tapped out. They're just gonna take all this damage, right? Uh, we're gonna take this, untap doing untapped things, <laughs> and then um, get another Xeno <laughs> Frieza. And then let's say they take it, we go and swing, uh, we pitch that, we take a life, they pitch a card. Uh, now we have a, a Limo, which is not going to be too great. Um, it's probably going to be some uh, draw fodder for this or from or for energy, so it just depends. Now we're going to be at uh, six life. Let's say they went ahead and um, swung with leader. We take the life. Uh, they swung with a one drop. We say, there you go, bottom deck one, and then we go ahead and pass, right? So let's say we do this, and I think... The uh, best play here is probably to do this here. We're gonna go ahead and draw, all right? Because what we wanna do is probably go ahead and wake it and then play the unison. We're gonna be tapped out, but that's not gonna be too big of a deal. Uh, so swing, and then we make them pitch one, um, and then draw one from here. So we're getting some value from the deck after drawing, but making them pitch, etc. Plus we now we have a kind of a line here, so you can kind of see the um, the idea of where you want to go for this. Then uh, what I usually do is go ahead and awaken uh, at this time so that way I can see another card just to make sure that I, I see everything I need to. And then from there, uh, they let's say they take a life. So then right now, um, 15 to 10, they're going down to four or whatever, right? Then we go ahead and play this. Uh, so instead of doing the effect, because I already know I have a unison in my hand, so anything that happens in there, I can either take a life or I can just play one for later. Uh, what you could do as well, if you didn't know, we can go ahead and just put this underneath and then that way you have three markers instead of two, but I think uh, it just depends on your play style and what you want to risk as. But right now, I'm going to go ahead and use the effect. Let's say they had that one drop there. I'm going to pop it, you know, play the, um, the uh, surprise attack freezer from there, and then we're going to go ahead and swing to leader for 15 crit, and uh, let's say they don't take it, they do block it. Um, and then from there, we're going to go ahead and uh, swing with this. And now you have a choice, depending on whether they take it or not, is if you want to go ahead and use the one star ball for combo power or go ahead and place it on, under this one and then play um, the Xeno uh, Frieza to make them pitch another card, basically. So depending on their hand, depending on how aggressive you want to be, you now you have some choices for that. Um, so in this instance, you know, what's the max amount of value that you can get? kind of hard it's kind of hard to say um without actually playing an actual game but you can kind of see what the mulligan and what the line of play that you want to go uh even for like a cheaper deck like this so hopefully that does help hopefully this does help and honestly i'm kind of curious let me see um yeah so yeah i mean you have you have two choices you have either uh pitching these guys uh in order to yeah you know what it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. I, I'm not even going to do this because now I, I'm too much into it. I was just trying to show the mulligan. But now, now hopefully this, like I said, this helped. Uh, hopefully this, um, these, these series of videos um, helped. It took a lot of work to kind of get all of them under $60 and, um, you know, be really in depth with it. Um, and even, even then, I don't feel like I was in depth enough. So uh, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one.